The heart of the matter is chromatin. The reason uh, uh, cancer stem cells exist is because their chromatin is screwed up. The reason that cancer cells can evade the immune system is because their chromatin is screwed up in a way that prevents them from being recognized by the immune system. And so the tree research arms that we have in the lab are geared towards that common thread, which is that cancer is a disease of the chromatin. My name is Mathieu Dupier. I am a senior scientist at the Princess Margaret Cancer Center, part of UHM. The human genome is more complex than genes. We have in every single cell of our body about 6 billion letters of DNA. And only 1.5% of those letters corresponds to genes. So 98% plus of the information in the human genome is not gene. But that 98% of DNA sequences, like of A, C, T's and G's, are positioned away from genes in a way to influence gene expression. But there's such a wide space that there is a need to be able to fine tune which of the remaining 6 billion bases are important for one gene to be expressed. And that's where epigenetics comes into play. It tells you of all the letters that are out there, which ones serve as what we call promoters for gene expression, which are really proximal to genes. They're like the light switch or enhancers. That's a different type of DNA sequence in the human genome that is typically found very, very far away from genes that they control. And those enhancers work like dimmers to increase a little bit or decrease a little bit the amount of expression that a gene can release. So all that information that fine tunes gene expression is not genes, it's non-coding DNA elements. And that's in those elements that you find the greatest amount of variability that justifies different traits, that justifies a normal cell becoming a cancer cell and so on and so forth. Your DNA in each of your cell is not just a string of DNA. It's actually wrapped in, in a complex with proteins that are known as histones. And when you find your DNA wrapped around histones, we call that chromatin. And depending on the density of these histones, if there's lots of histones proximal to each other versus if they're far and away from each other, it's going to impact the compaction of your DNA. By playing around with the compaction that you change and define which sequences are turned on, which sequences are turned off. And so the concept of studying this chromatin accessibility, this chromatin compaction, is studying epigenetics. It's studying how the sequences are compacted at different degrees in one cell type versus another cell type and how these degrees of compaction change in normal versus cancer cells. I would say uh, Louis Pasteur, the story of Louis Pasteur was specifically interesting to me when I was a kid. And so that was enough to hook me onto studying biology, understanding life, and which led me to uh, a career that I have today as a cancer biologist. So it's one thing to make discoveries in a research environment. It's another to have an impact in the clinical space. And what I'm looking for is for the field of epigenetics to truly be embedded within clinical practice. Um, I'm an ed educated individual in the space of expertise that I work on. Tomorrow I will be a patient. And I'm hopeful that the knowledge that I have based on the research we do, that's often model systems and preclinical, will be included in the clinical practice. So I'm glad that there are already ongoing clinical trials with epigenetic therapies. I'm glad to see that there is a growing body of startup companies that have epigenetics as a primary um, focus. And so it's heading in the right direction. 